Okay, welcome to this discussion on pressure. This is actually one of my favorite topics in fluid mechanics, and it's obviously really, really important in understanding fluids. So let's get right into it. So pressure you might know from previous classes or other um, experiences that pressure is really this ratio between some kind of force that's being applied over a unit of area. Now, this force is always being applied perpendicular to this area. So let's say you had some type of a container filled with, I don't know, uh, let's just say milk, right? Now, the milk is exerting some type of a force on all sides of this glass, on the inside of this glass. And that force is normally perpendicular to some sort of area on the inside container of that glass. So we say that the pressure being exerted on the side of this glass is really equal to the force, this force right here, over the area that it's touching. Now obviously we need units to measure this pressure in, right? So the units of pressure that I like to work with is really in SI units, and that is what we call one Pascal Pascal, and that's equal to 1 PA. That's just a short form abbreviation of the word Pascal. And this unit of pressure is really uh, 1 Newton of force over a square area in meters. So Newton per meter squared. So 1 Pascal is equal to 1 Newton per meter squared. Um, another important conversion um, to know is 1,000 pascals is really equal to one kilopascal, right? You just take pascals and you divide it by 1,000, and this is equal to 1,000 newtons per meter squared, right? So how does this relate to fluids? Well, from our previous discussions, we know that liquids are incompressible fluids, right? Incompressible. And we know that gases are compressible fluids. So these are the two types of fluids that we've studied in the past, but how do we actually measure the pressure from these types of fluids? Well, for something like a liquid, we kind of already studied that up here, right? If you pour some liquid into a container, that liquid is going to exert some type of a pressure on the sides of this container as well as the bottom, right? If you go, if you fill this glass container up with more and more milk, there's going to be a lot more pressure here at the very bottom of the container. So something like a liquid, you know, it exerts pressure on the sides of its containers on the bottom. And obviously this is, we're, we're having this discussion based on the fact that this milk glass is probably somewhere very close to Earth on the Earth's surface, right? If we took this container and we brought it into space where gravity was very, very small or non-existent, then the milk would just float around in the middle of the container, right? It wouldn't really cause any force to be exerted on the sides or in the bottom of the container. So because of that, we can actually say that gravity plays a pretty big deal or a pretty important factor in studying pressures that are caused by liquids, right? If you're in space, the liquid isn't really gonna cause any pressure on the sides of the container, but if you're closer to Earth where gravity is a factor or it is strong, then obviously the pressure at the bottom of the container is going to be more than the pressure at the top or somewhere in the middle. And that is because of gravity. Gravity is pulling these liquid molecules down to the bottom of the container. Now, the discussion really gets interesting when we actually talk about gases, right? If we placed gas inside of this container, well, we would have to first close that container off. So let me actually make a container right here. Magic. So if we pump this container with gas molecules, these gas molecules would be present inside the container and they would be moving in all sorts of directions. They would be bouncing off the sides of the walls, top, down, left, right, all around. And if this container is pretty close to Earth or at the ground level, then gravity really doesn't play a factor in calculating the pressure that's caused by this gas, right? The gas molecules are so light that gravity has a very almost non-existent 
or very, very slight effect on the gas. So then what exactly causes pressure that is exerted by gas fluids instead of liquids? Well, you might have guessed that if you took this container of gas and you started heating it up on a stove or you know, bringing fire to it to increase the temperature, then the gas molecules would actually move and collide faster and more frequently. They would bump into each other more often. They would bump on the walls more often. And every time there happens to be a collision on the side of the container, well, that is one molecule causing some kind of an impulse on the sides of the container. And if we took all of those impulses, all of those collisions against the wall, and we added them together, and we divided by the area that those molecules are running into, then that's when we would get pressure when we're studying gases. Now, if we took this same container and we brought it into space, into orbit, where gravity was very, very small or had very, very weak effects on you know almost anything, then the gas molecules more or less would still behave the same, right? If you increase the temperature out in space or down here on Earth, then the molecules will bump into each other more and more frequently if the temperature increases. So we can safely assume that for gases, the higher the temperature or the absolute temperature, the higher the pressure. And the same thing applies if we decrease the temperature, the pressure would go down, right? So gases really are dependent on temperature. Or more formally, I guess I can say thermal contribution, right? So now we know that liquids and gases or just fluids in general, there's two big factors that really cause these pressures that we're, that we're studying, right? One is gravity and the other one is thermal contribution. So they both obviously affect liquids and gases in different ways. And we can use this knowledge to kind of go forth in fluid mechanics and get into some more advanced topics. But there is one special topic that I really want to talk about, and that is atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure. Now, I just told you that for gases, gravity really doesn't play too much of a factor if the container is relatively small. But if we look at our planet Earth, right? Here, here is the surface of the Earth. So this is Earth. Now, this container that we were studying, the height of this container was relatively small in comparison to the height from the surface of the Earth out into space, right? So this is space. This height is obviously very, very big compared to the height of this container. So in this case, if our container is really, really, really tall, then you can kind of imagine that if we stuck a container here that was many, many meters or feet tall, then you could probably intuitively see that the gas molecules at the bottom would be more compact, they would be more dense, but as you start going into outer space, the molecules start spreading apart, the density becomes much less, so the density at the very top, this is density low, and at the very bottom near Earth's surface, the density is high. Now, why is this important? Well, I just told you that gases don't really depend on gravity. They depend on thermal contribution, right? That is how we measure pressure in gases. But that is only for containers that are relatively small, where if the height is small enough, then the pressure at the top of this container and at the bottom is really not going to depend on gravity. The pressures are going to be roughly the same. The pressure in gas containers are more so dependent on thermal contribution or the temperature as we studied here. But if the height is considerably tall, then gravity absolutely is an important factor in understanding how gases exert pressure on surfaces. Now, obviously, Earth is not perfectly spherical. There's mountains, ridges, valleys. The elevations are different all over the Earth. But we tend to measure the pressure at the surface of the Earth, or more specifically at sea level, to be about 101,300 Pascal. So that is the pressure. This is the average sea level atmospheric pressure that we measure 
on you know the sea level here on earth and we tend to refer to this value of average sea level atmospheric pressure as one standard atmosphere so this is one standard atmosphere right and we kind of the shortcut here is one atm so one atm is equal to 1000 or 101300 pascals or 101.3 kilopascals so to kind of wrap all of this up remember pressure is really the force over some given area that that force is being applied to and we usually measure pressure in pascals or newtons per meter squared and remember there are two types of fluids that we're studying liquids and gases liquids are incompressible and the pressure caused by liquids is more so dependent on gravity and for gases, the pressure is more so dependent on the temperature of that gas in the container. Now, there is a special case for gases, right? If the container is small enough, then gases are more so dependent on the thermal contribution. But if the container is very, very tall, in, in this case of, you know, if we're studying gases in atmospheres or the gases in atmospheres on Earth, then gravity absolutely plays a role because the gas molecules are going to be just more dense here, closer to Earth, and they're going to be less dense at the very top of this container or closer to space.